Assalamu uh, alaikum dear students, welcome to lecture number 7 of advanced information systems course. We have completed the module on information retrieval systems. Today we will start the new module which is about the semantic web. Today we will talk about the semantic web vision. We will see what makes semantic web different from the conventional web that exists today. And in the coming few lectures, inshallah, we'll talk more about the architecture, the technologies, the standards, all the things that make up the semantic web applications. So today we'll talk about today's web and the semantic web impact that it might have on many applications of the existing semantic, uh, the conventional web. If you talk about the current conventional or existing web of today, uh, most of the web is for human consumption. We, we can visit several websites, we can read the content, we can understand it, we can get information, we can do several tasks as well, but mainly it is for human consumption. Uh, although there are many systems springing up that do the things for us automatically, but we will see the vision of the current web and semantic web, they are entirely different. So the web of today is for humans and the web of tomorrow, the semantic web, it is for machines and humans. We will see shortly in the coming lectures, inshallah. Well, one of the most important application in today's web is the keyword-based search engines. We have discussed in the previous lecture that information retrieval has several applications. It is one of the uh, main things that the users are concerned with on web. We always get access, almost always get access to the different sites through the uh, keyword-based search engines. So the search engines, they played a huge role in making the current web popular and useful for the people. However, the keyword-based search engines or these information retrieval systems, they also have several problems associated with them. We'll quickly go through some of the issues and then we'll see inshallah in the coming slides of today how the semantic web proposes to resolve all these issues. The first issue is a high recall, low precision. Well, go to any search engine, let's say Google, which is the most popular keyword-based search engine, type any, anything, just any keywords, you will get a million of results. Even if you type meaningless terms, you will get some results. So, the recall is very high. We get millions of results for any keyword, but the precision is low. Well, it is not a hard claim. Like in many cases, you get your required information in the first or first few results, but in several cases, we have to dig deep to get the required information. And sometimes we manipulate, we use other synonyms we use different type of queries. We put uh, double quotations to search for phrases. We use several techniques to get the required information. But several time, we also get frustrated from the search results. So the precision is low. Low or no recall. The second issue is low or no recall. Sometimes we get too many results, very broad results, and we need to make them more specific by putting double quotation marks to search for the phrases or by using more specific keywords uh, and the result is maybe we'll not get any results. So sometimes for some very specific queries, we do not get any results at all. Although uh, with time, the results are improving. Of course, if you compare the results returned by Google today, if you compare them with the results returned by the same search engine like 10 years ago, you will see huge difference. 
Now they also have recommendations. You also see the related questions, their answers. There's a lot of improvement, but still uh, many times we suffer from these problems. The next is results are highly sensitive to vocabulary. What do we mean by this? That for in every natural language, there are many synonyms that are used for the same concept. Okay? For example, if I'm looking for information on, uh, let's say, faculty members, I can type faculty in the search engine. It will return all the pages in which this keyword appears, faculty. But it may not return the uh, web pages that contain the word teacher. Okay? Although teacher is the same concept as faculty, it may not re return the web pages which contain the word, let's say, lecturer or professor. Right? So the vocabulary that is used to build the pages, uh, the search engines, they are sensitive to that vocabulary. Because we have seen in the last few lectures in the information retrieval that many times the search engines or the IR systems, they are treating the pages blindly. They just take the words. What is the context of that word? What are the meanings of that word? The synonyms, the relationship between the words, uh, all these things they are not considered. So in many cases the results they are highly sensitive to the vocabulary that is used in the pages. So maybe you are looking for some information but you use a different synonym, a different word for the same concept. You will not get the results that use a different word for the same concept. So results they are sensitive to the vocabulary used in the web pages and the vocabulary given by the user in the search query. Results are single web pages. In many cases, our required information is spread across many pages. We want to synthesize the information. We want to get all the information on a particular topic. So there's no inherent mechanism in the search engines to actually answer our questions to give us our required information, right? Human involvement is necessary to interpret and combine the results. So, uh, as we just said that many times we have to do manual effort to get the information or to do any task by using the search engines. So without human involvement, the search engines are meaningless. They just accept keywords from you and they just return some links back to you. They do not perform any processing to give you the required information or to synthesize the information from various uh, resources or to actually answer your questions. Results of web pages, web searches are not readily accessible by other software tools. So as we just said that the results returned by the search engines, they are just links to the web pages. So it is like you ask someone, you go to someone and you ask for some information. He says, okay, please go to that place or that place or that place. You may get your required information there. But the, that person is not giving you the information. It is just giving you pointers. So you need to have some software tools on top of it uh, to, to interpret it. But the, the results, they are not readily accessible to these software tools. Okay? So you need to do much more effort to make sense of the results. They are just dumb links. You need to do a lot of effort to, to make sense of the uh, information or to compile it, to synthesize it, or to do certain actions or to perform certain tasks on this information. And finally, the increasing demands of the users. So nowadays, the users, they are not satisfied only by the links returned by the, by the search engine. They want something to be done for them automatically. Okay? But the search engines, keyword-based search engines, they are just dumb applications which get keywords from you and return the links back to you. 
So, these are some of the limitations of the current search engines, although with more technology, with more research, with more tools and processing and storage power, the search engines are improving every day, but we can see that these are the inherent limitations of the search engines. So, we will see shortly how the semantic web technologies they can help us in overcoming these limitations with minimum of the effort without changing the entire model of the current web. Uh, talking more about the challenges, first challenge on the current web is synonyms. Several words having same meanings. Now, if I ask you about this picture, what it is? You might say it is a house, but you might also say it's a villa, it's apartment, it might be called a flat, residence, home, mansion, tenement, mon monastery, dwelling, duplex. So you see lots of words describing the same or similar concepts, right? So we just discussed that the results are highly sensitive to the vocabulary used in the web pages and used in the search queries. Maybe in a web page, we use the word house, but the, uh, the user, when he wants to get information, he may give the keyword as residence or apartment or duplex. So, the synonym handling, again, I would repeat that it is improving every day with the search engines, but uh, still many times we suffer from this problem. So, on the other side, polysemy. Sometimes one word has several meanings. So, depending on the context, what meaning to consider, it is a tricky thing. So, sometimes we do use techniques like give the domain with it as well, but again it is a problem with the keyword based search engines. Like, let us take the example of pipe. What is a pipe? If I ask you, you may say that it is a tool or a device used for fluid transmission, but there is also a pipe for smoking, there are also a pipe for volcanoes, for sewing, for musical pipe. In computers, we have this vertical bar in the keyboard which is called pipe and th there is also a concept in pipe to uh, combine the data coming from several resources, okay. So, pipe when you give the pipe, which pipe is in your head, which pipe you want to look for, it is not clear. So again, you may add more information with it, but there is no inherent mechanism in search engines to handle the one word having several meanings or several words having same meaning. Another challenge in keyword based search engine is spamming. Well, there is legitimate SEO probably you have studied in one of the previous lectures, search engine optimization techniques. I believe it was one of the green text for you to read. So, these are the techniques that help any business, any website owner to improve their ranking in the search engines in legitimate way, in the legal way. But there are people who misuse the features of the search engines. So, they may use keyword stuffing. We have seen in the last few lectures like TFIDF, term frequency, inverse document frequency. It is one of the most commonly used technique for calculating relevance, okay. So, term frequency, if a term appears more number of times in a web page, it should be given more weight. So, what the, when the website owners, they came to know about it, now they started using keyword stuffing. Stuff one word uselessly several times, repeat it many times in the web page, so that a search engine will assign a higher weight to your web page and your website will appear higher in the results of, of that keyword. Similarly, some people they started using white font on white background, so that this information is not accessible to the to the human beings, to the users, 
but when a crawler, when a search engine will try to develop index by, from this website, they will get a lot of uh, keywords and that will improve the ranking of the uh, website. So there are a lot of negative techniques that are used to increase the ranking of your website related to certain search queries. It also poses a challenge to the keyword based search engines. So we have seen several challenges in the current search engines, in the current information retrieval systems. What is the key problem? If we summarize all of them, the main issue, the main limitation in the current web is that the meaning of web content is not machine accessible. The meanings are not machine accessible. For the machines, for the computers, these are just words. Like in vector space model, we have seen that how the words are transformed into numbers by using vector space model, but the meanings are not there. They are just treated as words without any contextual information, without the relationship of the terms together, without being able to understand the letter, the words, the paragraphs, and the content on the web pages. So we call it semantics. There's a lack of semantic. From here, the word comes semantic web, that we need to put meanings. Semantics means meanings. We, we want to put meanings in the web content. Right? So the, the core issue is that machines, they do not understand meaning. For example, it's simply difficult to distinguish the meaning between these two statements. So these are two statements. First, I am a professor of computer science. Someone says, I am a professor of computer science. OK, well, you are. And the second statement, I am a computer of, uh, professor of computer science. You may think, well, some other statement. Now you can see, for a human reader, the first statement it asserts, it states positively that someone is saying he is a professor of computer science. But the second statement, now for a human being, it's very obvious that the one who is saying the statement, he is not a professor of computer science. You may think I'm a professor, but some other statements. So these two statements, actually they are opposite, but exactly the same statement, exactly the same words, but the context, when you get, when you read the next few words, you understand that actually this statement is saying that I'm not a computer science, uh, professor of computer science, right? So for human beings, it's very easy to distinguish the difference between two statements, but for machines, they are just words. There's no way to distinguish the between these two statements. The solution. So now we understand the problem. What's the solution? The first is leave the content as it is and use AI, artificial intelligence, and NLP, natural language processing techniques, to understand it. Well, first you might say that AI is a very hot topic these days. Every company is running towards AI. So we can use AI and natural language processing to, to make sense of the content. Because almost all the content on the internet, on the World Wide Web, it is in natural language. So we can develop the techniques that understand the natural language as the human beings do. But we have seen that with all this processing power, with all this uh, storage power with all the technology, with all the algorithms, hardware and software, we are still unable to make the programs that understand the natural language as even a small kid does. So it is a huge task. It has not been done so far. Again, I'll repeat that, let's take the example of translation. So Google Translate is improving every day. But still, 
if you give a paragraph to Google Translate and you give it to a person, the translation of both of them will be pretty different. So the, the algorithms, the hardware and software, the technology is not, it has not reached up to that point where it can claim that it understands the language as the human beings do. So there's an alternate proposed by Mr. Tim, Mr. Tim Berners-Lee, we'll see shortly, who was the creator of World Wide Web. He has proposed that we cannot go for this approach, so let's do something else. We leave the current content as it is, okay, but we represent a web content in a form that is more easily machine understandable. So we do not really work on the programs, but we also put some burden on the content providers to provide it in such a way that the machines, they can understand it more clearly. Inshallah, in the coming lectures, we'll be talking more about it, how we can create the content in such formats, how the mach machines process it, how the semantic web applications are built. So, but the main idea is to, to represent the current content in a format that is more easily understood by the machines, by the programs. The semantic web approach says that we need to represent co web content in a form that is more easily machine processable. So we use intelligent techniques to take advantage of these representations. So it is like a mix of the natural intelligence and artificial intelligence. We put some burden of this problem on the content providers and some on the machines, okay? So once the content is represented in a form that is more easily understood by the machines, now we can use certain intelligent techniques to take advantage of this representation and process and understand it the way the human beings do. The idea is that the semantic web will gradually evolve out of the existing web. It is not like a competitor to the current World Wide Web, but it is, it supports the current World Wide Web, okay? Uh, if I take you back to the original web proposal, Mr. Tim Berners-Lee is the guy who invented the World Wide Web, okay? And he, he invented it while he was working in CERN labs. I'm sure you know this is one of the most famous labs in the world. So he was working there and he gave a proposal to the CERN labs and this picture, it is taken from that proposal. Let's try to make sense of this uh, image. Let's start from here. This document, it describes a proposal mesh. This document describes hypertext. This document refers to certain communication in ACM. This doc, uh, CERN docs include this document, okay? Uh, similarly, a proposed mesh describes CERN and so on and so forth. This was the original proposal given by Mr. Tim Berners-Lee to the CERN labs when he wanted to create World Wide Web. Well, you can think of all these nodes in this diagram as the web pages, websites, okay? All the nodes, they can be thought of the websites, okay, or the web pages, and all of them, they are connected through hypertext, okay? Let's say in this document, I have a link. If I click this link, I'll go to this web page, okay? On this document, I have a link. If I click it, it will take me to this web page, and so on and so forth. However, there's a main difference between this proposal and the World Wide Web that we actually have today. Why is that difference? The difference is the nodes, yes, you can think of the nodes as the web pages, the, but the arcs, the links which are connecting the nodes, they are labeled links. 
this these labels are very important they are labels okay so labels they describe a clear relationship between the web pages so like here the relationship between this document and this this web page and this web page it is described the relationship between this and this is refers to the relationship over here is include the relationship over here is wrote tim butters lee wrote this document and so on and so forth so when the actual world wide web was developed afterwards we lost these labels the the hyperlinks are there but what is the meaning now here if you look at this diagram you can understand the entire context quite easily what is the relationship between different nodes it's quite clear but we have lost these relationships this contextual information so it describes an entire context it it helps you to build a story right so if you look at this diagram you can write a very good story okay about this entire diagram with these labels but in the actual world wide web these labels were lost somehow so mr tim berners lee he wrote an article uh, quite later at a quite later stage to propose a semantic web he said that the original idea in my mind while i gave this proposal it was a semantic web somehow we lost the semantics and we ended up with non semantic web okay so uh, i hope you understand the basic concept of the semantic web in the second part of today's lecture we will see some of the applications of semantic web very few applications of course we cannot discuss them in detail there are thousands and millions of applications but we'll talk about a few of the applications just to appreciate how the semantic web technologies work and how they can make our lives different and better uh first of all the, the first application we talk about semantic web is knowledge management what is knowledge management as the name implies it is about managing the knowledge inside an organization how to acquire the knowledge how to access how to maintain the knowledge within an organization well every organization has a huge amount of knowledge like there are many work groups there are many committees there are many units there are many people who are working in any organization and over the period of time they have huge amount of internal knowledge knowledge about the inside entities knowledge about customers about their products about sales purchases and so on and so forth so this knowledge it is a big asset for the organization uh, and probably you know that nowadays most of the companies they they are making huge benefit they take huge benefit from this knowledge the big data the machine learning the ai techniques they are being used by all the companies for the competitive advantage so if so knowledge management is a key area in any organization organization to make progress to improve their processes to improve their uh, revenue and so on and so forth now uh, most information in the in the organizations it is available in weekly structured forms okay there is strongly structured form as well like a relational database which is a strongly structured which has a defined structure in the form of schema but there is a lot of information which is weakly structured like text audio video okay uh, there are many formats but it is not as it doesn't have a well defined structure like a database now what are the limitations for knowledge management for these sources of knowledge we have just seen for searching information we have talked about the keyword based search engine limitations okay we have so seen several limitations similarly for extracting for maintaining for viewing the information it is not easy 
human involvement is necessary for maintaining inconsistencies in terminology over a period of time uh, and in different documents the terms that are used they are not consistent they may change so uh, similarly we may have outdated information for viewing uh, it is impossible to define views on web knowledge of course in the internal databases you can define view but for uh, loosely structured or unstructured information we do not have any ways of controlling access to the information for different kind of users so there are several limitations for knowledge management currently in the businesses if we have a semantic web enabled systems then uh, we have just seen that semantic web is based on the idea of machine understandability so in a semantic web based system the knowledge will be organized in conceptual space which means it will not be information now you see we are talking about knowledge we are not talking about information so it will have it will be organized in a conceptual space it will have the contextual information it will have the meanings associated with the knowledge so we can use automated tools for maintenance and knowledge discovery okay so because it is machine understandable it is machine accessible so it is it becomes much more easy to to build tools for maintaining the knowledge and discovering it semantic query answering instead of keyword based search we may have a semantic search which talks about the meaning of the uh, keywords not the not only the keywords query answering over several documents we can support uh, synthesizing the information as we discussed in the previous slides that there is no inherent mechanism in the current web to synthesize the information from any resources so here we can have query answering over several documents in which we synthesize the information we do not return only the results and defining who may view certain parts of information it will also be possible the second application we talk about is b2c business to consumer e-commerce okay a typical scenario is user visits or one or several online shops browses their offers selects and orders about we all do online shopping a lot nowadays so you can go to different online stores you can browse their products you can uh, you can compare them and you can select the best according to your preferences but of course the human involvement is there human involvement is required you cannot do this entire process automatically there is no automated way of getting the information from several resources comparing them and returning the results to you okay uh, there are some shop bots there are some kind of agents that can help you but they have many limitations they rely on wrappers so wrappers means for every product or for every store you need to write a different program to get the catalog information to compare it and to 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 get different type of information so you need to write separate wrapper programs for every application which is a tedious task wrappers extract information based on textual analysis which is error prone uh, what does it mean for example uh, whenever a wrapper will try to get price of a product it will assume that there is a dollar or let's say talking about saudi arabia there is sr sign and then there is some uh, positive number which is the price of the uh, of the item but of course you will understand that this is a very crude way of getting the information which is prone to errors so although shop bots they can help you in in your shopping experience to some extent however they have many limitations so if we have semantic web enabled b2c then we can develop intelligent agents that can get the information from the stores they can get information regarding pricing regarding product information delivery terms and conditions the reputation of the store the customer reviews so all this information can be synthesized 
for much better experience for the user. Okay. And they will even at the highest end, they even might be able for negotiations. You may have an intelligent agent which negotiates with the store agent on price or delivery or, or other terms. So just like human beings do, when we go for physical shopping, we may do bargaining with the shopkeeper. Similarly, in the semantic web is a kind of agent-based web in which every entity may have an agent which acts as kind of autonomous entity an intelligent entity and they can even negotiate, bargain or uh, do certain consultations just like the human beings do. Similarly, next is B2B electronic commerce, business for business to business. Uh, it has a greatest economic promise because for big businesses, there is huge money involved in the partnerships in dealing with their uh, suppliers, distributors, retailers and so on and so forth. So uh, there is huge potential for the intelligent technologies in business to business e-commerce. Currently most of the B2B transactions they are done by using EDI or nowadays it is being replaced by XML but these are tedious. They are like isolated technologies. Only the experts they understand them and you need to uh, agree on the format, vocabulary, the structure, the schema to be able to exchange the information. It is a tedious task. So uh, although there are several standards there, but B2B is not well supported by the web standards. So if we have a semantic web enabled B2B electronic commerce, businesses can enter in partnerships without much overhead. We can say like, they can uh, build partnerships on the fly, okay? So it means at run time. Because as I said before, semantic web is like uh, an agent web, okay? Which is based on the agents that can communicate, that can talk to each other like human beings do, that can make decisions, that can make choices, uh, that can, that can work, work on behalf of the, their owners or human beings. So uh, for B2B also, uh, the auctioning, the negotiation, and drafting contracts, it can all be carried out automatically or let's say semi-automatically uh, by software agents because they understand and they can manipulate the information like the human beings do. Wikis, wiki wiki sites, they are, uh, I'm sure you are pretty familiar with them. They are collection of pages that allow users to add content via web browser interface and they, they are used for collaborative knowledge. It means uh, these bodies of knowledge, they are developed through collaboration of many users. Every user adds some piece of information to, to these bodies of knowledge and ultimately we get a significant amount of knowledge. So the users they are free to add and change the information without ownership of content, access restriction, or rigid workflows. Like one of the most common examples I believe all of you are familiar with is Wikipedia. This is one of the main use of wiki wiki sites. The Wikipedia, all of you know that it is uh, like an encyclopedia developed by all the common users and experts, one of the most common use. Similarly, knowledge management of an activity or a project, you can also manage the activity or project like for, for example, for brainstorming, exchanging ideas, coordinating activities, exchanging records, and so on and so forth. So if we have semantic web enabled wikis, uh, the inherent structure of a wiki given by the linking between pages get accessible to machines beyond mere navigation. So now this information may, be, may become accessible to the machines. It is not mere navigation. Navigation is there. You can just click to any, ent any entity and it will take you to the, to the relevant page. 
but if it is available to the machines now they can make sense of the information. Structure test and untyped hyperlinks are enriched by semantic annotations. One of the most basic thing in the semantic web is the annotation. Like all of you are familiar with XML in which we add metadata with the data to make it more understandable for the programs. So th that is the basic idea and inshallah we will build on it in the coming lectures. So this is the main idea of semantic web as well. So in wiki wiki sites we can have semantic annotations which add more accessible to uh, which add more meaningful information to the to the wiki wiki sites. For example, a hyperlink from Hufuf to Al Ahsa could be annotated with information is located in. So Hufuf is located in Al Ahsa and it can be used for context specific presentation of pages, advanced querying and consistency verification. So if we have this information accessible to machines, we can build on top of it many applications that make use of this information. So we have talked about uh, a few, very few of the applications of semantic web. Of course, uh, I, I believe now you can imagine that if the meanings of the content are accessible to machines, just like the human beings, uh, we, can, we can build intelligent agents, we can, we can do the tasks automatically, we can automate all the things on the world wide web. So they say sky is the limit. So the sky is the limit if we have this underlying information not only the information but the knowledge, the information with the meanings, it is accessible to the machines. So the sky is the limit. We, we can do lots and lots of stuff with this, with this added information. And the semantic web proposes to build the applications. Inshallah in the coming lectures we will talk more about semantic web and we will see, we will we'll discuss some more uh, technologies, techniques and the architecture of the semantic web and you will be really able to appreciate the benefits of the semantic web technologies inshallah. Thank you very much. That is the end of our lecture. Inshallah in the next lecture we will talk about the semantic web technologies and then we will talk about the layered architecture of the semantic web. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.